So I'm here with my friend, Dennis Kang, who's been fighting MMA since 1998. It's a very long time ago. Too long. <laughs> Too long. But we watched how MMA training evolved from, I mean, back in the day, a jiu-jitsu guy, to get ready for an MMA fight, would just take his gi off and That's do some true. training in a t-shirt. And we've come away since then. So what are some of the big changes that you've seen over those 20, 30 years of being in the sport? Well, I mean, you have to remember the gloves, MMA gloves did not even exist at the beginning, right? My first few fights were without gloves. Um, and at the beginning, there was no ready-made blueprint to train. So people would still train separately. So you train with at a boxing gym, at a jiu-jitsu gym, at a wrestling gym. Okay, now you have gyms that train specifically in MMA. Okay, so, so they blend it for you almost. That's right. The whole sport is just MMA as a whole, right? So the biggest takeaway that I see is people are sparring more full MMA with small gloves. It doesn't mean they go all out, but they're simulating the sport that they're actually competing, which makes perfect sense, which should have been done from the beginning, but I don't know why that many people didn't do it. I sure didn't. We used to do uh, kickboxing with takedowns, but with big gloves. And the, the small box. That's right, shoot box. And the small gloves was reserved for jujitsu. You know what I mean? But we would not start on the feet with small gloves, which is something that we do now. We'll do full, basically full fights with small gloves and shin guards now. Yeah. I mean, even doing jujitsu on the ground with small gloves was an innovation in the day. Because That's right. You, before that, you do jujitsu maybe without the gi. That's right, with no gi top, just gi pants. And we were still grabbing onto the the, the gi pants. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we would do sweeps like that and, and everything. So it, it, it makes sense. That's the ground right. power. Yeah, it's funny how in retrospect, I mean, everything is so clear, but back then it just didn't come to our minds, you know? So you think that a fair number of fighters are now doing most of their training with small gloves? Absolutely. I think, I know, I mean, this all really clicked for me when a couple years ago, um, a fighter that I know, he said to me, I don't even do big gloves anymore. I only train in small gloves. And I was really shocked. That, but I was shocked, but I was like, wait a minute. It actually makes perfect sense. Like a soccer player doesn't play basketball to practice for his game. You know? And you could see how training with big gloves gets you into bad habits. In boxing, this is a pretty good defense. This is yep. a pretty good defense. But with a small glove, you can just go right through this and pick and you know, That's the right. whole cover up using yep. the hiding behind the gloves. So one of the, also one of the biggest things was with boxing gloves, it's basically a cast for your hands. Like you don't even have to make that tight of a fist, but with MMA gloves, they're much smaller. So you have to make a tight fist. The impact is much more severe on your wrist and your, your, uh, your fist. So you really got being taped up even with that. Yeah. So you got to really, and the distance is different too. You have less padding. The distance is mm -hmm. different. The weight is different. So your punches feel different. You have the, you know, the threat of takedowns coming. So the whole MMA striking has evolved into its own little style. Okay. What about using the wall? Using the wall now, so that basically the blend of jujitsu and wrestling, either keeping taking somebody down and keeping somebody down, or being on the bottom and trying to get back up. You see whole rounds, whole fights now, just disputed on the wall. So me here, trying to take you down, I take you down, right? Yeah, maybe you here, and I just work on keeping you down, or you standing up, or me taking your back. And I mean, that is that is a style within itself, really. You have to devote whole sections of practice just to that. Yeah, and it's tough to go, hey, freestyle wrestling has answers to this because they don't really. I mean, you can still use a single. They don't. Some, some aspects of it, but not really because in freestyle wrestling, you start in this position, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, in MMA, you start standing and you use strikes to set up, set up the takedown, yeah. right? So it's really, it's two different things. Are there any other changes in the training methodology that jump out at you? So one of the biggest things is people are now moving away from doing the heavy conditioning circuits, like the fight gone wrong routine, where you do almost like a what's a fight gone wrong routine? It's like a, a almost like a CrossFit routine of like go to curls, to jumps, to squats, to deadlifts, to the battle ropes. You know, like a conditioning circuit routine geared towards MMA. People will do that more in the off season, mm -hmm. but you know, fighters are realizing that what keeps you fit and in good cardio in a fight is being calm, being technical, and sparring lots. It does not necessarily hard sparring, but sparring enough so that you become relaxed. Because you can be a marathon runner, you can be a CrossFit champion, you will gas out in a couple of minutes in an MMA fight. Because MMA is one of the only sports where there's so much adrenaline coming, like boxing and kickboxing. So it's different than other sports where you can stay super calm. So to stay calm, you need to do the sport so that it becomes normal. Okay. So hot take then, a couple months ago, 
Tony Ferguson for his return to the cage. Yeah. Went and did some insane Goggins. week of training with David Goggins and just tore himself down. And I want to say it was like three or four weeks before a fight. Yeah. It was, and it was like a ridiculous <laughs> amount of like very long training cardio, which is not something he needed. Ferguson was not, was always a cardio guy, I think. He never had a problem with gassing before. Did he? No, no. he didn't. Yeah. yeah. So that would be an example of a fight gone wrong. <laughs> not a fight gone that, wrong. That's even, that's even more extreme. I, I mean, I used to do those circuits. It's, it's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. So for the off season, be okay for conditioning to take some Yeah, for the off season, if you're really, it depends. I mean, with each individual fighter, some fighters might already be athletic and fit. Some might not, they might be super technical, but be lacking in the, the physical department. So a coach might want to put them in a good physical program to give them that, that manhandling strength and, and uh, explosiveness. Yeah. yeah, so the guy who is great at endurance doesn't need more endurance. The guy who's great at strength doesn't need more strength. The guy who's great at explosiveness doesn't need explosiveness. They exactly. might need more of an isometric right. strength. That's or right. Something. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think is going to be next? If you had to pick something that you see on the training horizon. I mean, I've, I've been saying this for a while now, but now you have fighters that are not born into the sport, almost though, but they're starting from such a young age and they're staying with it, you know? So they're literally like every generation in every sport is getting better and better, yeah. right? But I mean, now the sport's been around for so long that kids are starting to watch MMA and train MMA from super young. I mean, that doesn't mean that they're sparring super young. I hope not anyways, but they're at least going through the motions and learning it and just, or like I said earlier, it, it becomes super normal and they become super calm. So that's, that's how they have great cardio and they just become wizards at it. So it's kind of another day at the office because they've been doing it since they're like that's right. years old. It's just a part of their life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your, your prediction is for a bunch of phenoms who were training from age five. I think so. Yeah. I think it's already kind of happening right now.